Now, I've been asked to speak about the new currencies. And this is for my sins, because when I was at the intelligence department of the Bank of Spain, our, our worldview was the, the currency can be controlled from the bank, uh, the central bank, and can, with the help of the government. And we can isolate it and tell and say what, what is going to happen. Now, what we are seeing in, at present, oh, how do I get? Oh, right. OK. <clears throat> what we can see at present is A, a new appearance of currencies, and B, <clears throat> the words of Hayek, saying that he thinks there must be currency competition and private, co uh, private supply of, of money if we want to have freedom. And this is the general spirit in which I'm going to speak now. Right. <clears throat> now, the best way to speak of these currencies is calling them virtual currencies, because you have digital and cryptocurrencies. Digital are different. As we, as we, say, as we put it, <clears throat> uh, digital currencies dispense with paper and plastic and, uh, but they're the same old national fiat monies and uh, simply that uh, the movements are annotated on computers. Now, cryptocurrencies are different. They are issued mainly by private institutions or companies. They are similar to uh, the anonymous operations in cash. And there's no bank intermediary. It's peer to peer. Also, the value is governed by an issuing rule depending on each of these currencies. And uh, <clears throat> they are differently present in the three functions of money, as we shall see. <clears throat> also, these digital currencies don't care about macroeconomic policy. What they want to do is give people a currency that is according to their demands. And the effect of those currencies on macroeconomic policy is something we, we don't really know yet. And we hope <clears throat> to see in the future whether they are going to mess up macroeconomic policy or help or do nothing. Uh, we've just seen, as I say something, the, the new currency of Libra has been, uh, was going to be launched very soon. But um, all the authorities have spoken to the different shareholders of Libra. And lo and behold, uh, they are under the bed now. They, do, they don't want to join because the regulating uh, authorities don't like this kind of competition. All right, so <clears throat> what we are living is in a world where digital innovation is prevalent, growing, and fast. That's where we are. And as we shall see, uh, the, the changes are impressive and so quick. So if cryptocurrencies are peer-to-peer -peer currencies that have no centralized regulating authority, no central bank. It means that money is created and transferred without the intermediation of banks. And cryptography is used to ensure transaction security. Now, <clears throat> what you see on the internet is a huge geyser, as I say, of innovation. It's month by month. So not only do you have the WhatsApps, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, <clears throat> you also have the, the whole of innovations in the world of fintech, uh, a world where finance, finance is going to be aside or beyond banks. And finally, we have the new technologies, blockchain, smart contracts, and so on. <clears throat> what I want to put across is that very quickly, even now, there's innovation. And we don't know what the effect is going to be. But we have to watch the, uh, uh, this, uh, this phenomenon, because it's going to be with us and change the way we we do economics. Now, the new currencies, you, ha you started with Bitcoin in 2009. 2009, 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, suddenly Bitcoin has become um, something everybody speaks about. I think that Bitcoin is not going to last and uh, has the competition of uh, Ether. <clears throat> That's 2014, for goodness sake, five years ago. And Ether really, um, issued by Ethereum, Ether is really going well. But then 
all these currencies, the Bitcoin and the Ether, have split. And now you have Bitcoin Cash. You also have uh, an Ethereum Classic, because there was somebody who stole 500 million or something. And so they decided to, to relaunch um, Ethereum. And then you have XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Ethereum Classic, EOS, Dash, my gosh. And, and then you have Ripple, and that doesn't work with the blockchain. So innovation is there for us. We don't know what it will give. We have to watch it. And it's something that incredibly is going so fast. And my question today, is it controllable by the authorities? What are they going to do about this, apart from phoning the people who were uh, trying to, to launch Libra and say, now you watch it. If you, go, if you join the Libra people, you're going to pay for it. And it has an effect. All right, so uh, Bitcoin um, is, uh, is not convenient uh, for if we, we take the three, if the three uh, rows of money, which is uh, uh, exchange, fixing prices or, or telling you about prices and then as an asset, Bitcoin is very difficult for payments because it's made in such a way, I don't want to stop at it because many of you know it, that it may take more over 12 minutes to confirm that you can do a transaction in Bitcoin. That's a very long time for buying a new thing. Now with Ethereum, it's 12 seconds at present. So I think Ethereum in a way is pushing Bitcoin out, especially of the transaction market. And this is an indication of the new things that are happening all the time. Now, <clears throat> the number of Bitcoin transactions, seven per second, Visa 24,000 per second. So it's still rather remiss. And uh, Bitcoin itself has a supply cap of 21 million. There can't be any more Bitcoins beyond the 25, 21 million Bitcoin. With Ethereum, um, what you have <clears throat> is 706,000 um, transactions um, daily. <clears throat> and it's, it is staying, it is the basis of all sorts of operations. It's, been, it's called a full Turing um, system because with Ethereum, you not only can buy and sell, you can also, um, you can also have an IPO and launch a new company. Um, <clears throat> trying to get money through Ethereum. And also Ethereum is the basis for smart contracts or intelligent contracts about which I, I can say something in a minute. <clears throat> and so uh, Ethereum, I'm putting this, I'm not predicting the future, but I, I'm saying Ethereum seems to be pushing Bitcoin out. And so this is an impression of what we get in this world. <clears throat> and all these worlds of virtual currencies have exchanges where you can exchange the virtual currency for dollars, for pounds or whatever. So it's linked to the old fiat currencies, but we don't know what the effect will be on the latter. <clears throat> now here we have Libra. Uh, they were going to do something interesting, which was Libra was going to be a basket of currencies, a basket of the traditional currencies, pounds, dollar, yen, etc. <clears throat> and therefore, with fixed, fixed proportions, but of course, flexible exchange rates. So what you had there is not really a new currency, but a sort of summary of old currencies. And those old currencies seem to be a good idea, for, especially for, uh, for the inventors, which, uh, uh, for Facebook, because if you have a very large custom, then having your own currency will enlarge that custom and also give you some seniorage profit. Um, and the, uh, <clears throat> the danger is so big that you have all the heavy heavies in, in, the, financial, in the central banks just going for them. Uh, it's, it's really extraordinary that they haven't been taken to court, um, for, by, to competition court. They're using all the bad effect, all the bad means to stop competition as, uh, as they are doing with Libra. Okay, now, <clears throat> my favorite, and Pesa. <clears throat> this was invented in Kenya. <clears throat> the um, miners from Kenya going to South Africa, gold mines and so on, 
uh, wanted to give their mums in their villages a way of speaking to them without having to spend money. So they sent minutes, telephone minutes over to their mums. And then these uh, ladies, um, lovely, all, all in white and big and fat and intelligent, as we see them on, on, the, uh, on the TV, they saw that they could use these minutes to buy milk and bread and so on. So suddenly, the St. Pesa has become a parallel currency to the official currency in Kenya and then spread to other places, also to Zimbabwe and also to, uh, to other places in East, in East Africa because in West Africa it's been regulated and it's nearly dead because of that. So M-Pesa is an African invention of a new currency. Who expected it? Well, of course, it was used by uh, Safarico, which is a, a telephone company, and also overlooked by the Kenyan uh, Central Bank. But still, here you have something that's growing, um, an invention of a continent where fixed telephones are useless, People have these mobile telephones, and now they have their own currency if they need it, because the local currencies don't perform so well. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> uh, I have two slides here, which uh, I don't want to stop too much uh, there. Uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to, to, the main limit to these virtual currencies is their custom. Uh, for uh, a currency is a network good. And therefore, the more people who use it, the more useful it is for you. And uh, so, as I have here on the next one, what you have is there the, uh, um, the, the, the uh, supply of uh, the, demand for, the demand for the new currency times price <coughs> is equal to um, the income of the country. Um, uh, the, square, the square root of the income of the company, and theta is a very important one because it's a di digital currency market share. So the bigger the share that you have, the more useful your currency is, and more people will use it. And this is the main limit to these new currencies. Uh, you can use them, of course, to speculate and so on, but to have a real currency where you can do not only... Um, not only buy and sell, but also mark prices or tell you about prices, you need to have a large zone. And that is difficult to do. And what <clears throat> the um, state currencies have done is by having legal tender and allowing people to use pounds, pounds and dollars and so on to pay tax, then that gives you a custom enough. And it's so difficult for the other, the, the other currencies to be able to be I have a large network, and this is something we don't know what will happen. Will there be new currencies? Are they going to be successful? Are they going to push aside the normal, um, the, the, the normal, the most state currencies? We don't know because there's a question of will they be used by people. <clears throat> now, central banks have a profit motive. They are heads of a club. Uh, they, they are the, the, the heads of a club that gives lender of last resort facilities to the members of the club and also uh, the members of the club ask the central bank to invigilate all the, the chaps in the club so that they don't abuse their situation. So a central bank is a, is a normal, is a natural development in the money world because uh, they tend to centralize their re the, the, uh, the reserves and uh, they tell the banks that are in their, in their folds that they will not be allowed to, uh, to go broke and at the same time they inspect uh, those banks to see that they, that they behave. So what is the profit motive of a central bank? To have a large monetary zone because that gives you an income of seniorage. And there's an automatic discipline if there's banking competition because uh, if you are not giving the kind of service long-term stable currency that has a good club of commercial banks under it if you're not giving that somebody will compete and push you out 
and uh, the idea that uh, you have to be uh, automatically disciplined by not trying, not having an inflation, and then you have a floating exchange rate between the different currencies gives you the motive for central banks, which is to have as, as large a custom as possible and therefore to have as large senior as, as they can. <clears throat> it's not true to say that mm, there's a bank monopoly um, in, in this world because uh, even the Bank of England or the, uh, uh, or the Federal Reserve and so on are not monopolists, they are oligopolists. And as I say, they've been behaving like oligopolists. Any competition must be killed outright. And that's what they're trying to do with, with Libra. <clears throat> oh. yeah. The functions of money you know, transactions, numeraria, and asset. Now, virtual currency will not immediately and generally acceptable as a mean of transaction, especially Bitcoin, because it takes such a long time to, um, to confirm uh, your to confirm uh, your trade. As numerals, they're too volatile, and now what they are working as is as assets and as vehicles to have IPOs and, um, and that kind of capital, uh, that kind of, of capital performance. Now, I'll simply say that legal central bankers don't have a um, a record to be proud of. I simply have to look at year seven or perhaps at the 30s. And so especially in some countries where they're used by the government to, uh, uh, to have an inflation or to pay the you know, army or whatever, then that makes it easy for new currencies to come in, new currencies that can be relied on. And those new currencies are happening as we saw, as we saw with M-Pesa in Africa and, uh, <clears throat> and other currencies in, um, in the world. It's been very curious to see that Ecuador is dollarized. They don't have their own currency at all. The left-wing president of Ecuador, um, the previous one, wanted to de-dollarize the economy. And so they started, they started issuing their own currency. And the people rushed to the banks to change them into dollars again. So it didn't work. This is another thing to say. In the end, the oligopolists of the large central bankers cannot control, do not discipline, they cannot control their, their, their currency. That happens, uh, it's the people who control the currency. If they're allowed to go into another currency that is safer, they will do so as they did in Argentina and so on. Now, <clears throat> I defend monetary competition. In fact, we do have monetary competition. If you have a pension fund, it will be in many currencies. And it will change from one to the other. <clears throat> because we can't trust only our central bank. You don't know what they'll be able to do. In Peru, you have uh, parallel currencies, uh, the, uh, the sol and the dollar. And uh, the central bank, twice a day, looks at the exchange rate. And if the exchange rate goes against the sol, they reduce the, their supply of souls. So they have there a discipline in the exchange rate, in the free exchange rate between the two companies. Oh, uh, there's a very good essay by Lastra and Allen, the Euro system. Uh, this essay is, uh, is about whether the European Parliament, whether the EU should control or what it should do in front of this revolution. Uh, they say that uh, it is a revolution, but they don't know what should be done. And this is uh, the gist of what I wanted to, uh, to tell you. It's a continuous transformation, as we've seen, and very difficult to, to control. So what they said, Lastra and Allen, is watch and wait. Uh, and since my point is, should the European Parliament, should the EU do something about these currencies? Well, my answer, not yet. You don't know how to. And you have to watch and wait what will happen. And in the end, in the end, I think they won't be able to do much because the innovation is so big. So since public opinion today is highly critical of globalization and commercial freedom, prefers redistribution to economic growth, wields science as a weapon 
to freeze change. Uh, freeze is the right word because they are worried about the, the, the heat of our atmosphere. Looks askance at technical development, loves paternalistic regulation, and is suspicious of individual choice and critical rationalism. Then why not be happy that we have perhaps alternatives to our national currencies? And I remember Gary Becker, when we used to be um, rather pessimistic about how things were going, our only hope for freedom is that science and technology are unstoppable. Unless we have a nuclear war, they are <coughs> unstoppable. And therefore, our hope is there in innovation through new ideas in the world of money also.